Hi, this is Dusty. Today, I wanted to give some advanced tips. Since I'm not editing this particular video, uh, forgive my stuttering since, uh, well, I am an Aspie, so public speaking is not my forte. Anyways, since these are advanced tips, uh, I'm going to go over some minor early game spoilers and maybe a bit of mid-game spoilers. Anyways. From the very start of the game, there's a lot of things to unlock. In particular, you could uh, take this road, get your horse around here, <clears throat> and then find your way east and grab the bloody slash from here and pick up the physics uh the physics potion here <clears throat> and then warp over and use that to warp over to this area to grind out runes <clears throat> And then you could come here, unlock your spirits, or actually, yeah, you could, uh, once you get your horse, you could come back to the church you start that you, uh, reach at the beginning of the game at night to pick up your wolf spirits. Your wolf spirits will be nice. Uh, here you'll pick up your jellyfish spirit summon, and then you keep going north take this route here that kind of zigzags around the castle and once you reach here you'll unlock the hub area since you unlock the uh, hub area and you have access to the mm, the rune farming site <clears throat> you could pr proceed to get the two bells that would get your weapons to plus 12 yeah from here, you go over to Northwest, and on this particular uh, campsite, there is a merchant that sells a waste lamp that you could, uh, where you no longer need a torch in one of your hands to light up dark areas. Anyways, you try to head into the water area <clears throat> and follow along the cliffside until you hit a cave in this particular cave uh you just you could fight your way through it or uh or just go through or rush through it doesn't matter what's important is the boss in this one particular rune is very easy which is it's actually one of the easiest bosses in the game all you need to do is jump attack and uh, jump and strong attack this enemy until their posture breaks. Once their posture breaks, uh, you start doing full damage to this boss, which is essentially one of the easiest bosses in the game. Once you beat the boss, you get a bell, and that bell gives you uh, the ability to buy smoothing stones 1 and 2, which will, which will be enough to get you to plus six. Since you got Bloody Slash and you could farm up to a plus six weapon, it should be enough for you to just keep following the right wall and at the end of the river is a spot you could climb. You basically keep climbing this until you reach the very top. You're gonna fight one boss. It's not a particularly old uh, it's not a main boss, but you should be fine as long as you have Bloody Slash and a plus six weapon. Once you do that, you should come out on top, and from here, there's two important directions to go. <clears throat> For this, you want to head north, uh, northeast until you get to the Grace, then circle back around to the road, and from here... You want to climb up these very dangerous set of stairs 
Don't fight, just rush through it and get to the gate on the other side. Anyways. Once you're here, you want to head in this direction because we want to get to this particular cave. So you just head east and just head east from here. Since there's no road, just follow the compass. From here, you should see a place to climb down, which is right over there. Well, I guess this is the spot where you climb down. Anyways, you climb down here, you get to this cave. This cave, <clears throat> at, at the entrance of that cave, or near the site of grace, is a hidden wall that accesses the uh, dungeon in particular just follow the right wall until you hit a treasure chest and inside that treasure chest is another bell that lets you buy a uh that you could turn in so you could buy smithing texts or this uh smithing stones three and four which is enough to get you to plus 12 weapons Having plus 12 weapons very early in the game really uh, opens up the map. It allows you to explore so many more places once you get to plus 12 weapons, which is why I suggest getting uh, this particularly early. And once you're here, just keep riding. And while you're here, uh, you could pick up uh, a very useful potion or a very useful crystal tier rather. Well, I'll just show you. Anyways, uh, before you even reach this place, you probably picked up a potion of physics or one just physic. What we're looking for is this twiggy cracked tear, which temporarily stops rune loss on death. Very useful. And you can actually get it here. All you gotta do is ride east and uh, ride east until you can see a yellow tree to the north. So I'll just showcase where it is. Just follow the cliff face and you should see some stairs there. Just follow it up. See that big tree over there? We're heading over there. Sorry, I have uh, a little slight coughing fit, so I'm going to clear my throat a bit often. Anyways, those are not actually enemies you need to fight. All you need to do is just circle around and pick up the item from the bowl over there, and that's the twiggy cracked here. Anyways, let me escape these guys so I can use the warp point or open up the map. <clears throat> Anyways, by getting that tier and putting it on your potion, you could, you'll have three minutes to fight freely and if you die you won't actually lose any runes. So that's always a good thing to have. Get out of here. Okay.
And while we're there, uh, we could... You can proceed east, but this is completely optional. It depends on if you want stealth for your character or not. Because once you follow this road, uh, you'll get to a pretty keep creepy village. You'll see another Erd tree that's protected by a very strong enemy, which you could avoid. But with this tower here, <coughs> Mirage's Rise, will give you a spell, which, uh, which is called Unseen Form. Even though it doesn't look like it does anything physically, you're actually uh, semi-invisible to the enemies. So you could run around uh, at a somewhat close distance and they still won't see you. That's particularly important because we're going to pick up a... Because once you pick up the invisibility spell here, you want to go back to where you climbed up that tower. Uh, or climbed up in order to enter the upper plateau. Anyways, once you warp back here, you can head north through the water and into a volcanic valley. This particular valley is going to circle around and you'll eventually hit a fort, which you're going to skip right by. And then you run through the lava here. Don't worry too much. Your horse could actually stay in while well, survive the lava for a little bit. Anyways, once you circle around, you just keep following the path and you'll find this particular shack. <clears throat> this particular shack has two very important things. First, there's a lot of sheep here, but there are some enemies hidden along the sheep. And the other important thing is this particular crossbow. You also find this crossbow here. It's called the pulley crossbow. As you can see, it fires three shots. Sure, it doesn't seem all that important now, but if you equip your pulley crossbow with bleed arrows, this is one of the best uh, range weapons you can get early in the game. Though there is some stat requirements, you need to have at least, whoops, ah, you need to have at least 16 strength and 16 dex to wear this crossbow. Anyways, anyways, from here you could, uh, there are guides online that will help you progress towards the volcan uh, volcanic manor. Inside the Volcano Manor, you could join a particular group that will still, that will only stick around until you beat this uh, area's main boss. So, before you even uh, fight the main boss in this area, just come to the Volcano Manor and pick up a few quests. These quests are, well technically they're bad guys, but once you beat you take uh, two letters, which makes you eliminate two NPC targets. <clears throat> well, there's no point in me showing where the NPC targets are. Uh, you'll get to it on your own. But by beating two NPC targets, you unlock a particular talisman. This one. Repus is vile. If you haven't noticed, I don't actually make any sounds when I run around. All thanks to this Repus is vile. So, with the invisibility spell, or semi-invisibility spell, and the ability to run silently, you could uh, technically run around a lot of areas without being seen or heard. <clears throat> Also, very early in the game, you can fight one of the main bosses uh, by coming to this area, circling around, and fighting a boss here. If you beat 
this is actually a main boss, so I won't tell you what it is, but it is a very difficult boss. It's highly suggested that you have at least 40 points put into health before fighting this boss in particular. Anyways, once you beat this boss, <clears throat> a particular a new area is going to unlock, which will uh, let you go underground. And from the underground, <clears throat> you'll be able to gain access to a city or underground city. There is... This is a very interesting boss uh, over here. If you manage to get over here, you get to fight a interesting boss. But the reason why this particular unlock is important is because eventually you'll get into the night city or the underground city. And there is, in this room in particular, is one of the best spirit summons in the game which I'll showcase in a bit. Let me warp to an area where I could uh, summon this garden or uh, that's spirit. <clears throat> the best part about this spirit is it does not cost any FP at all. It does cost some health, but nothing overly important. Anyways. It's important to adjust what weapon you want to use before summoning the spirit. As once you summon the spirit, it's going to copy everything you have or what you're currently wearing. Yes. It's a copy of your character. One major difference between your character and the uh, and the spirit summon is that your spirit summon has so much more HP than your character. <clears throat> and it could drink uh, some flasks. So let's showcase this uh, Guardian Spirit. Right, I just wanted him to blow the horn. But yes. But without a doubt, this is... Depending on how your character is built, this is definitely the strongest spirit summon in the game. As you can see, made pretty short work of this area. But then again, I am very high leveled. So, there is that. <laughs> Anyways, there are some very powerful long range weapons in the game. In particular, that cr this crossbow is one of them. The other one are short bows and this black bow. This black bow is actually not available early in the game. You actually have to be able to enter it, the city in order to grab it. But the reason why short bows and this black bow is so uh, powerful is because they have access to barrage. Yeah, if you can find... While it does slightly less damage than a full shot, the speed in which you could shoot more than makes up for the damage loss. But this is one of the best PvP weapons uh, to chase enemies down when they're trying to run away to heal. Anyways, back to the volcano. If you actually have... Uh, enough 
strength, health, and strength. Um, in this particular, uh, for this checkpoint, which is somewhat outside of the Iron Man, I think. Yeah, it's outside and below it. You could keep heading east and fight a big boss here at this Erd tree. What's so great about this particular crystal tier uh, that you get from this uh, Erd tree is this thing, the Cerulean Hidden Deer. If you're not a magic build, it doesn't matter, but if you're a magic build, this is one of the most OP items you can have. Basically, like, for this particular spell, I can only cast it three times in a row before I run out of speed to uh, cast it. However, if I have... If I drink this potion, I can fire it off continuously. For about 10 seconds or so. Yeah, this is a nightmare to dodge in PvP, so... So, all the more reason why this is considered one of the best, uh... One of the best items to grab early in the game, if you can. Of course, the, that particular spell is um, a little difficult to get. You're probably going to be fairly late game before you uh, could get it. Anyways, very useful. Also, uh, I guess I should go over leveling. See. When you get plus 12, when you have the ability to upgrade your weapons to plus 12, you don't actually need to put too much emphasis on your attack stats. In fact, very early in the game, you probably want to concentrate on these first three stats. And you only level these stats to until you, you meet the minimum requirement for your equipment. Uh, un until you, uh, you're good with your stats here. In particular, it's very good to get to Vigor 40 as early as possible. Mine 30, um, this can wait depending on how, uh, well, it really depends on your character. If you have a high enough mind, you could use your special skills a lot. Um, I have it at 30 because I... I use FP quite a lot. For example, the sword. And then there's bloody slash. Then there's the magic stuff, and then the, the barrage of arrows. But yeah, I use FP quite heavily, so that's why I invest quite a lot in mind. And endurance, you need about 24 to 25 in order to wear uh, the full knight set. And a bit more in order to wear accessories or talismans rather on top of your on top of your armor. The only reason why I have it to plus 27 myself is for if I want to use all this equipment and a little extra if I needed to be but yes uh, the knight armor and the carrion armor are fundamentally the same speaking of carrion armor the shield is very nice this is actually one of the uh, best medium shields you could get in the game. 
because it has one of the highest guard boosts for a shield that's only weighing 4.5. This is very light. I mean, it has problems blocking fire and lightning, but you technically want to roll out of those anyways. But what makes this particular shield very nice is it actually has very decent attack stats. For this, let's go back to... Uh, of course, it's not going to be anywhere near as strong as my current one, since it's plus 25. But, uh, unlike other medium shields, this particular medium shield is uh, very powerful. Let's two-hand the shield. As you can see, even as a shield, it's a very decent blunt weapon. Even though, yeah, it's a, one of your best blunt weapons if you don't want to carry an actual blunt weapon. This also does some... This is also one of the uh, best weapons to use against guarding enemies. Since it, this does a good amount of magic damage, it will hit through their shield and do significant damage. Anyways. Oh, and another thing that's great about this particular shield is that it also comes with no skill attached. So you could go straight into your uh, weapons, weapon art, rather than uh, having the two hand at first. Anyways, uh, that's it for that. And one final, final tip. This is actually super late into the game, but once you unlock this area, you will find a very particular warp in, well, right around here. This will actually warp you to one of the best farming zones early, or late game rather. It's going to take you straight here. This is very late game, so keep that in mind. Anyways, these uh, these white colored enemies or white skinned enemies are not in a hostile, while the red ones are hostile. They're not too difficult to kill, but yeah. As you can see, there are like 2,000 to kill. Oh, that one has glowing eyes. Enemies that have glowing eyes uh, give you five times more experience. But yes, since these are not hostile, you could just uh, kill them. And grab the XP. I know they look like uh, aliens, they probably are, but don't worry too much, they actually attack you in the overworld, so don't feel bad, they're not innocent. But yes, this is one of the best endgame farming areas in the game, and that would conclude my advanced tip videos. Uh, anyways. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching this video. It would be great if you liked and subscribed, and I'll see you guys next time.